Alright everybody, welcome back. This is I Say Cousin. Today we're going to be playing Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones. And hopefully discovering some more information. We're trying to do the stabber in the dark alleys. Uh, this kind of stuff we can't really do much more on. And we're trying to find the House of Spectres, which is not in Arkham. Well, it's in Arkham, but not in the city. We're going to go over there, see how we go. That's a long way to travel, though. But, we we'll pray the RNG gods are on our side, and off we go. Okay. Oh no, all the dogs get high reaction, that's fun. I wonder if I can escape. I don't really want to have to deal with... Oh god, they killed someone. Yeah, let's get out of here. Crap. Retreat! Retreat! Okay. I gotta remember that for next time. I don't think I can rest. A red-haired, sweaty man is running towards you in terror. Keelan? A red-haired, sweaty man approaches you in seemingly miserable state of being. From the look of his clothes, he may be a sailor. Or perhaps an immigrant. The man speaks breathlessly in a thick Irish accent. It is Keelan, hopefully. I push them into this, he inhales deeply. Their blood is on my hands now. Ah, stop scaring me, stop it. How could I have known? Seemed to be an odd fellow, he did. I said he'd never have time to spend all that gold, but it could change everything for us, for myself and my pals. He must be Keelan. Aye, I am, and I know ye. Saw you wandering around looking for me. You're the only one who cares. You have to help me. Tell me more about the gold. We got it from his house in Kingsport. How could I have known? You've got to believe me. No other choice we had. Your pals. The Boston Rejects we called ourselves. Found each other having some hard time. We did. No work, no money, bellies empty, no chance to return to what we left behind. We were slowly dying, sir. We ain't no thugs, no never. We tried everything, sir, and everything failed us. This country was eating us piece by piece. You have to give the gold back if you value your life. He answers in a hysterical shout. The gold is gone. We sold it all before we arrived here. To Salvador's cousin, somewhere near Innsmouth. He's not hunting us for the gold. He wants us. He wants our souls. His eyes dart about fearfully. Kingsport. I wish I had known. The legend. The legend is true. Oh. Oh, no. Should I have brought Eduardo with me? Kingspot, the legend was true. I should have brought Eduardo with me. Oh. 
Uh huh. Oh, jeez. Is this an unwinnable fight? Nameless soldier gets to dive into the fray of it though. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. Okay. Maybe I don't need add water. Leave this one alone, we'll talk to him. What? Okay. The lifeless body of Keelan is frozen in a state of eternal agony. He became the last member of Boston Rejects to fall to the cutlass of the Shadow Beings. You may examine the corpse for traces of the supernatural beings you've encountered. Yeah. Black ectoplasm. Ectoplasmic excretion on the scars reveals that these beings came back from the dead. Where does that leave us? Local superstitions. We do have a king sport. Uh, general notes? That one. I think we have it somewhere. Look at the law. Do we not have it any? Ah, here. We did read these ago a while ago, so a terrible old man, huh? What does that mean for us? Oh, okay. Alright. Looks like we're back on our journey. No, we still got a ways to go. No more interruptions, please. Brilliant. Area unlocked. The mysterious crag. Isn't this cool? With protruding eyes that flash amidst the gloating mists, these exotic tribal relics seem to be tracking every step you take on this treacherous path. Alright. Alright, here we go. The closer you come to this enigmatic house, out in the middle of nowhere, the more you are filled with overwhelming dread, a chorus of angry whispers reaches your ears. You can almost make out the sound of cursing. Knock on the door. At your first touch, the door opens, as if the house is aware of your presence. You sense something beyond the threshold, shrouded in the impenetrable darkness, filling every crevice of this dismal house. Two small dots pierce you from the darkness. A voice, aged and brooding, separates itself from the chorus of whispering, cursing whispers. You wouldn't have found me home if you wasn't looking for it. I remember that voice from somewhere. We're gonna overcome our schizophrenia for this one moment. The little voice is familiar from some past encounter. You can't exactly pin it down. It is true that folks remember me at times. The dots are smaller now as the voice's owner is either smiling or angry. Hello, Mr. Devil Man on the door. You've been very naughty recently, haven't you? You come to my house with rather, the eyes flicker sinisterly, grave accusations. I reckon you must have evidence to back them up. 
Because by the old tradition, I have every right to question your judgment. You better know the facts that led you here or there will be consequences. You feel a malignant hunger being directed at you. Fair enough. Shall we begin? From where ails the slaughterer? King Sport? After a brief silence, the voice is heard again. You're not completely clueless there. Speak me this, whose blood has been spilled. Damn. Not Marino. It was Abel, wasn't it? Belonged to that wretched lot in life, but remembered afterwards there. Eh? Speak me this. What instrument was used? Pirate cutlasses. Aye, with cutlasses they were slain. Now say, why did the slaughterer kill? In retribution for his stolen gold. Once I knew a mate who became lustful upon seeing gold. Got all wet and slobbery, if you know what I mean. That shiny thing plants a dark desire in men's hearts, eh? Speak me this. What is the true name of the slaughterer? Uh, it is Thomas Olney, because Randolph Carter was the dream man. Ujato was head of the Indian tribe. Horatio was the magician. You know there is a particular kind of fool that I despise most. The one that doesn't admit what he doesn't know can easily lead to, or can easily, or be easily led to, doom. I won't be this forgiving next time we meet. What? I screw it up. Alright, uh, Kingsport, Salvador, Pirate Cutlasses, in retribution for his stolen gold. I don't have this information. Sometimes tis wise to hide what you know and sometimes tis wise to admit that you don't. Speak me this then, what name does the slaughterer go by? The terrible old man. The door creaks as it opens fully. You can see no one, but the voice is heard once again. Come in, cabin boy. Ah, we did it! Mm. You're done with this place, eh? Go, you bastards. The man you see before you is none other than the queer old man who you spotted talking at his bag in the old eel. Oh! Good, good. Still here. Now, aren't you ashamed of accusing an old gentleman like myself of such a foul deed? He gives a disturbingly vulgar laugh. Heh. <laughs> Eyes fooling with you, cabin boy. I always enjoyed some good old man slaughter. It gives a kind of relief, you know. Taking an adversary out of the game. One less bastard to worry about makes the bloody world a nicer place for a sea dog like me. But my cell wasn't behind the slaughter of those wretches. He points at the spectre floating nearby. It was cheating Logan Dawkins and the other scum. See, I was their captain once, but they stopped listening to me a long while ago. Up until this bloody moment, they've been talking my head off. Greedy bastards they are. Asking about their share all the time. The gold that I promised. The gold that I never gave. But they were fools, you know. There are things that every bloody sea dog keeps in mind. Like you better know the ship what you're boarding. Like your captain's orders may mean your death. It is a tough trade and we set sail knowing that. So when things go ugly, we real sailors don't pull like that sissy over there that thinks himself a bloody corsair. The spectre continues to gaze at the old man with a silent burning hatred. What? The old man addresses the entity as if it has just spoken. I will shut your bloody trap of yours, Dawkins. Your pals are all gone now, and look how weak you are. It seems those grumpy old gods have other plans for you. And who knows, perhaps for myself too. Nodens might even allow me to enter the turquoise palace. After all, I belong to the sea more than any place. Why does that one remain? The 
terrible old man glances at the faded shadow that was once cheating Logan Dawkins and spits at his feet. The thick phlegm passes right through the spectre's feet to splatter the floorboards. Just simple. He hates me even more than he loves his gold. He's still hoping to get me, but look at the useless scum. The jellyfish is more dangerous than Dawkins right now. He should have left with his friends. So you think the murders are over now? With killing dead and all? You know what, cabin boy? I never liked it in this rotten city, so no one can hold me here. My damn crew are gone except Dawkins, and he's in no state to pick his own teeth, let alone be stabbing a fellow. So I reckon we can say the bloodshed is over. Yet, the old man grins. There is still much blood to be spilled in this damn place, and I can't say I envy you. The other spectres are gone? Like they should have been a long time ago, right at the day of the whirlpool. But I know those bastards. The grudge they held against the thieves was deep. Uh, okay. So deep, they stayed even after the, cold, the gold was gone. Constantly bending my ear to find those thieving wretches. He suddenly changes his tone. Stab the thieves, we say. Cut their throats, spill their water, hang them for the mizzenmast. Now tis all silent, tis finally silent. You can see the longing rise in the old man's eyes, like still water on the windless night. Nodens, you mentioned him before. Then you know he's the lord of the deep. The seas of the world belong to Nodens until the world was ruined by the old gods. Now, those things, for the first time, you read fear in the old man's eyes. They corrupt and shatter and devour until little animals like us find no place to belong or simply to be. The sleeper is awake now, spells the name in an alien tongue. Cthulhu. And he walks in between all these strange realms. Uh, the cult also seems to worship, worship this Cthulhu. Is that what rules over Arkham? I can sense Cthulhu's presence here like I can smell gunpowder from a hundred yards away. And I'll tell you one thing, the former is by far the more dangerous. Gunpowder will grant you a clean death, but the great old ones, the things they do to your mind. They torture your hopes, speaking of which, I better take my leave. You asked me about the dismal man before, is he a servant of Cthulhu? Oh, did I? My mind isn't what it used to be, cabin boy. This fellow you mentioned, he must be a nasty one, eh? Then perhaps you're right. Gods have uses for such messengers and envoys like if himself is one of those. If the world was destroyed, what are you doing here? Oh, that is a bloody riddle, isn't it? An intriguing but also a terrible, terrible riddle. One for which I am happy to not have an answer. Mayhap I once had one. Who knows? Tell me something else. I've read the story. You led your men to doom. The man shows a tooth of a smile. Do you believe every little story that you told, boy? Let me tell you one thing about that old wives' tale. Those bastards should have stayed dead. The stories also place you in Kingsport. And why are you in Arkham? Not the brightest star in the sky, are you? The wretch who stole my gold came here. So here I be. You see, this house of mine resides in more than one place. I can sail the winds of ether when the need arises. I didn't Grabble up the ranks to Captain, or oh, just to answer to a cabin boy. Make it quick, I plan to set sail shortly. Someone must pay for those murders. A jarring laugh bursts from his lips. Ha <laughs> ha. You reckon things are fair in this world? He can hardly catch his breath to continue. Even after all this, that was good, cabin boy. I can't help but question how you managed to survive so long. Your kind is like blood to a shark. And maybe sooner or maybe later. But they always get you. He looks away, and the mess they leave behind. So you know a way out of Arkham? I don't want to be a bad captain, cabin boy. But there is no berth for you in the boat that I'm taking. Even though you gave me some nice entertainment along the way. The old man looks at you with his fiery eyes one last time. I tell you to farewell, but I know there is no chance of that. And he turns away to face the door without another word. Yeah, what's he doing?
A lead bottle. Ah, oh, we leveled up. One moment, please. What do we have here? The soul of a scavenger of the sea shall be found inside a bottle of lead. How about that? What is left of the black substance at the bottom of this corked bottle embodies the will of cheating Logan Dawkins, writhing with his undying desire for revenge. Okay. Very old glow, probably dating back to the 18th century. The familiar landmarks dotting this weary sphere are infinitely far away now. They exist at all. Resonating seashell. I hear you, outsider. Just give me a moment. What enticed you to pick this up, even more so than its mesmerizing facets, was a deep but vague hum resonating from within, as if the object was singing some forgotten hymn. not quite sure what we're supposed to do with that but that's okay although it's of a smaller gauge than the ones that comprise the arsenal of the great war vessels of yesteryears it can devastate the targets which it was originally engineered to hit but whether it can arm the horrors from beyond remains debatable can it be that this heinous sea creator, transformed into a dusty decor, is actually a distant and perhaps ancient deep sea relative of the eel? This grotty figurehead, which presumably once adorned the prow of a buccaneer's frigate, is an amalgamation of a Faustian sea devil and a siren. Alright, outsider, what do you want? The outsider looks to where the bottle of lead sits waiting on the terrible old man's table. To breed such an undying grudge for the sake of a few metal trinkets, a dispute that already caused their ultimate damnation, it's hard to swallow. Uh, yes, we tend to do this to ourselves. I share the same opinion, I'm afraid. Is that it? Alright. Now that we've done that... Where you going, old man? Hey! You know a way out? Alright. supplies to rest do I here we go a cooking sound disturbs your f you from the short nap you've been taking on your journey calling you up from the depths of a lightless dream similar mechanical sounds follow open your eyes and look for the clicking sounds you see the name of soldiers sitting on the ground a few feet away he is busy assembling his trusty m19 or M1913 Weatherfield, as you watch his automatic motions, it seems something is off. He sh when he shakily turns the gun and puts its barrel beneath his chin, you understand the reason behind your peculiar feeling. Things appear to be escalating rapidly. Uh, put the gun down. He shifts his finger to the trigger. God forgive me, but I cannot keep on. He suddenly shouts in a haunting tone. I'm drained, can't feel, can't even feel fear. I used to be scared of things, of death, of failure, of never seeing my loved ones. I used to be alive, you see. And if I can't even feel fear, then I must already be dead. So please, do not judge me. Hopelessness invades these last words, which come out in a whisper. Because I tried. Did your mother send you here to kill yourself and break her heart, soldier? Yeah. 
The pale man turns to you ferociously. What do you know about my mother? Williams. And who gave you the fucking right to come here? He is almost howling now. Leave me alone. I'm just trying to save a friend's life. Cast his eyes down. I tried, Williams. I tried. I have a shadow inside me. The shadow is also me. And it eats all my hopes. He sobs. And now nothing is left. Nothing. I've had my share of terrible days. Uh, the soldier sits through your story with a face completely devoid of expression. When he finally speaks, you're unsure if you heard anything he said. It's time for my guard duty. He sniffles and shakes himself. And he continues with a shy smile. An exceptionally rare sight on his grey face. Thanks, Williams. And you are not that much of an arsehole. Just a little bit. Again, he returns to staring into oblivion. Oh my. I guess everyone's got their own problems, huh? Continue on. During your journey, you start hearing the murmurous echoes of a throng. As the sound increases to a disturbing volume, you can hear people yell in disquietude, panic, and even terror. But regardless of where you direct your glance, they cannot be seen. Then silence. Where have they gone? Suddenly a shock jolts your body and you unaccountably find yourself within the crowd. You're still in Arkham, but it's, it's old Arkham. Lifting your head up, you see the leaden skies of Earth. People are in panic, trampling each other to escape. One among them is unaware of your presence and is dashing straight at you. On impulse, you lift your hand as a protective measure, but the woman simply passes right to you. A wave of panic starts to heave in you. What's this place? Are they the ghosts? Or are you? Gather all your willpower and try and disenthrall yourself from this nightmare. You fully condition your conscience to break out from this terrorizing vision into which you were brutally shoved. You repeat, this isn't real, this isn't happening now. The hellish sound of apocalypse comes cracking up the dimensions of reality, penetrating into your mind and soul. To persevere your sanity, you once again hear that sound which was erased from your memory and thereby remember. This is the black day, as it's getting reenacted. You once again understand that no human merit, no human trait or merit of yours can ever rescue you from this hell. The skies above melt away and the whole world is dyed in repulsive colours. People are ripping each other apart. This is ruin, both material and spiritual, the ultimate downfall of humanity. When you find yourself in the lonely and forsaken wilderness, you realise that you're lying on the ground in a fetal position. Your nails have gashed your palms, your jaw won't open from being clenched tight, and you've peed yourself. At least we're alive. And we made it back home! Yay! I think we're gonna go to the old eel and sleep. Oh, we're not going to the old eel and sleeping. Oh, Grandfather, Almighty oh, Cthulhu. We know the book is nearby, it's presence. We beg you, Grandfather, accept the blood of this illiterate. Show us the way to the book. That should not be read. Guide us to the book. Show us the way. Book of the Dead. All right, we have our next quest. One of the many public executions which you've grown so accustomed to in Arkham. The, the ebullient killing of this man was perhaps the most inhumanly macabre of them all. Uh, all right, we can't do any spells.
All right, I think we'll end it there for today. Oh wait, Wilkins. Oh, okay, he's fine. Yeah, I think that'll end it there for today. Next we get to find out what's going on with the cult and also the book. Maybe we'll find out about the statuette. Who knows? Uh, I think I know who to go for that. That'll be the antique stealer, right? Anyway, this has been I Say Cosm. Stay tuned for more Cosmic Horror video games. Thanks for watching.